I knew the Bugaloos more than I knew the Beatles or the Monkeys. It's you know amazing. what I mean? Like that was I knew the Bugaloos, and then I encounter the Monkeys, and then I'd encounter the Beatles. And it's like, oh, these guys are like the Bugaloos. This is the first time I've ever seen this. Oh my God! It's this like Nazi rat, and I think he's supposed to be like uh, the guy from oh Laughing. <laughs> Because La Laffin was like a big influence on all these shows. But it was a guy who would say, very interesting. He's supposed to be like, dude, the sets are incredible. Love it. They, they do Cockney rhyming slang. And it, like, it's real. We talked about this in our Monkeys episode how, like, when somebody would, like, imitate the Beatles, they'd put on a thick British accent. But then if you hear the Beatles sing, like, they don't sing with a British <clears throat> accent. No. And when they speak, they speak with an Irish brogue. And but and and they sing with, if anything, they sing with like an American, American Southern accent. Yeah. And you know, but like the Bugaloos, it's like, oh, we gotta <laughs> ba bang it over your head at their English. <laughs> like, oh, we the Bugaloos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oi, mate. You use your gingerbread. <laughs> you gotta use your gingerbread, me darling. Love those grapes. It's the grapevine. Phil Collins auditioned to be a Bugaloo and didn't get it. The villains are always the oh, Martha so Ray and Benita Bazaar. Sue, 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 do you want to be a Bugaloo or whatever? Yeah. I think like Graham Nash or somebody like auditioned to be a, one of the monkeys. These jobs come into town where it's like, oh, we need, you know, we need like young British rock and rollers to play. So yeah, we're talking about the Bugaloos. So we're it, we're we're going down the the list of Sid and Marty Croft shows. Bugaloos. It was so important to me as a little kid. An, an early introduction to like rock and roll. Like this is my un, you know. Uh, and again, I'm watching them in rerun. The original airing is like before I was born. All that kind of stuff. But they they like early seventies. Early seventies in the late seventies and early eighties, which is when I I would have seen these things. But like some of the earliest TV I ever saw, and, and kind of. Again, like I knew the Bugaloos <laughs> before I knew the Beatles. Or, I, I, I knew the Bugaloos first, Monkeys second, Beatles third. So it's kind of funny because it kind of goes the, <laughs> it's, it, it's actually the exact opposite uh, in reality. But yeah, the Bugaloos. I've seen this character. Yeah, again, like this stuff leaks into the, into the, you know, What's that guy's larger name? culture. I can't. Oh, Sparky. Is the, and the, the music's pretty good on this. Oh, Sparky, won't you share <laughs> your life? And the he looks like celebrity chef Bobby Flay. <laughs> <laughs> He's played by Billy Barty. It's Billy oh, Barty. Oh, we love movie. Billy Barty and love Billy Barty. Billy Barty's in a bunch of these... Sid and Marty Croft shows like he's he's one of their like utility players again all this stuff is so like such good. early memories for me the guy uh, Peter Platter who's got records for eyes audio tape for hair it, it takes place <laughs> in this like magical land they're 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 tiny I guess they're like uh, you know like the grass is tall they're these tiny bug people that are a band and it's like oh ha, ha, I get it the Beatles and then you get bug you, you know you make the Beatles literal they're actual like little tiny Beatles. bugs a British bugs that speak in Cockney rhyming slang and have a band and live in this Fuck magical forest. I love and, Peter Platter. <laughs> and uh, Martha Ray plays Benita Bazaar, who is like, she's like the witchy poo of this one. She's like the villain, she's the villain and she wants a big musical career and she's got money and she's got a whole bunch, she's got this like Nazi rat that works for her. She's got, she's got Wolfer and Tweeter. She's got all these people working for her. Lots of money, lots of glitz and glam, but no talent. And so that that is like, you know, that's the big dynamic is she's so jealous of the Bugaloos and their their youth and their talent and and, and, and she just tries to like drain it out of them. And in some, some of the episodes, literally, some of the episodes are like steal Joy's voice. The whole show is imbued with music. With music, yeah, I figured you'd, you'd like it. Cause it's, cause um, Puffin Stuff is kind of like a catch all, like all purpose fantasy world. And then they kind of specialize. So then you get Lidsville, where it's like a hat-based yeah. fantasy world where everything's built around hats. And then this where it's music. Like music's a little broader. So and it is kind of cool, like inside a jukebox and like records everywhere. There's they're like a Jocksville. It's like a sports themed jo every, There's like that's Woofer and Tweeter. So they're like um, love those. I feel like the big hurrah of this stuff was like in the '90s, sort of like rave culture. Uh, you know, it was like, you know, young Gen Xers who were kind of obsessed with their own childhoods kind of brought this stuff back. I feel like there was a, there was like some, you know, hip hop album or maybe like a, like a rave track or something that had Woofer Tweeter 
Sure. That's the, the very talented Martha Ray, Mark Harris, who married her. And like, so she's like, she's like the old witch on the Bugaloos. And like Mark Harris marries her like 30 years later, you know? <laughs> it's just one season. You feel like it's underutilized because it's just these sets and the whole setup. And, and she's so great. It feels like, you know, they, they, they're just, they're just, all these shows, they're just getting started. Yeah, and then they end like. Yeah, they end abruptly. But it, it does, uh, I mean, this show did have its moment. It was pretty big. There was a lot of hoopla around it. And then they were going to do a second season and they were gonna do a movie. They had the movie all set up, ready to go. And then uh, I think maybe it was Columbia. Columbia Pictures like filed for bankruptcy and the movie got scrapped. Like they were ready to go, it got scrapped. And then it kind of like in the fallout, you know, the second season just didn't end up happening. But that's sad. It's I weird. like all this, a great all this... look. Everyone has a cool, everyone looks neat. Looks yeah, cool. the, the outfits, <laughs> the idea of, the one guy is kind of like sleeveless and has this, it looks almost like a onesie or something. Like, like it, it buttons on the top. But Joy, they, like her haircut they, is just like phenomenal. They, they they look so cool. I mean, comparatively to the, you're going, uh, these go to 11 for, what's the band from the Croft Super Show? Uh, oh, the Bay City Rollers. Not the Bay City Rollers, the the, uh, the first one. that I did some research. They, they actually were like a like a, oh, it was like a fake band a, first a fake band but then they got replaced by the bay by city the bay. okay i thought i thought they were the bay city rollers the whole time no. and then they just were like okay yeah we're the bay city roll like they I, do this sort of like uh one pill makes you like from jefferson airplane. jefferson airplane type song here yeah the music's really good and with all of these the business model was like wall to wall so it was like they have the show and then they make an album because they wanted the monkeys and they, yeah. they pitched it. They said, we're making an American or we're making a British version of the monkeys. <laughs> they all, it's, it's, you know, Talk about like, the, we're making it in America. Tail, like, yeah, we're, yeah, exactly. Like the, the monkeys were like an American Beatles. Beatles. Now we're making a British monkeys. monkeys. Yeah, like isn't that the Beatles? And uh, and so they yeah they get you know British they fly. We're making in British an, kids. The, an American bugaloos. <laughs> yeah, some, the next person makes it. But yeah, that was the thing. It's like oh, you can have a TV show and then you can sell records at the same time. And uh, very smart. You know the the album's good. There, there's there's some good tracks on there. When Mark Harris married Martha Ray, he's like fantasizing about her. 30 years younger when she's playing Benita Bazaar. Now, as a kid, I th I thought that uh, Martha Ray as Benita Bazaar, I thought that was Phyllis Diller. Because, like, I was aware I of Phyllis Diller. I did, too, Diller. in the opening yeah. credits. I, and I, th I think that's what they're... Like, they probably approached Phyllis Diller, and they probably said, you know, the same way they get Chuck McCann and say, hey, can you skipper it up? Can you do a little Al and Hal? They probably were like Martha Ray and trying to... Uh, nudge her in the direction of the Phyllis Diller. Resume, they're like, have you had six chemical peels in one <laughs> year? <laughs> they're like, check yes or no. But yeah, I love that boom, boom, boodly, boom, boom, boom. And that, whoo, that like psychedelic flute going. Wolfer and Tweeter in Wolfer the back. Wolfer and hang on. Yeah, the, the Cockney rhyming slang is like crazy on it. I thought it was Phyllis Diller, too. Yeah, because, I mean, it's Phyllis Diller's visual style, like, all the feathers and stuff. Yeah. And then and then that, like, fake nose looks mm -hmm. like it's supposed to be, like, a Phyllis Diller nose. I like that they're singing for Sparky. For Sp yeah, they're trying to lift his spirits. Yeah. Sparky's, <laughs> Sparky's always getting depressed. Dude, this is a great yeah. track. Yeah, it's, it's a good track. So they have a whole they have a whole album of, of stuff. They, they try to put, like, sort of environmental messages in it. You'll see that, like, Puffin stuff seems like it's just pure like straight up entertainment or whatever but as the shows go on they start to have like sort of messages and stuff and so there's definitely like an environmental thing and they want to keep their forest clean and stuff in this and you see like the one where i really started seeing like where they were trying to like really like communicate some like real world issues was the lost saucer because they, they go to these different they go to these it's like a time machine they go to these different future years and sort of see different like trends I kind of play i love out. the lost saucer yeah. but yeah the bugle is it's just it's it's got its claws into a section of my <laughs> psyche you know and, and and it has from an early age so it's always gonna like it's, it's so it, iconic yeah. looking. it's like striking and like yeah so real I, colorful I, I it would it would definitely be you gotta have a dune buggy i know this shows. is this is what i love about like this whole era this sort of late 60s early 70s and like all through 
the Sid and Marty Croft stuff, you have like Wonderbug and stuff, but they can fly, they can. Do, they don't need a car, but I'm so glad they, they have, have one. one. It's amazing. It looks incredible. And like, I, dune buggies always make me happy. Yeah. <laughs> like Beachcomber well, or like... And we were talking about like the Monkey Mobile. Yeah. You know, you have like the Batmobile. And then um, HR Puff and stuff, they have like their own vehicle too. Like I love this I love custom... It. The banana vehicles. splits, and they have like the three wheel, like the banana those, splits like, had uh, one, those, yeah, uh, like six wheeled, like um, mm -hmm. not enough hours of TV, but still a lot. And these these shows, they had such a footprint. And again, like for for me, it was like you know, ten years or so after these things were created. Like um, like as a as a little kid, I, it's like get, you know, it's it's uh, you know, it, permeating it's, your permeating, brain, yeah, permeating my brain, and it's it's like. Yeah, it is. It's just this, it's like a year of television. It's like one short kids show season, not even like a full like TV season. And this is from like 71. So it's like five years almost before like, uh, like the Sp Space Nuts, like, and these mm -hmm. other shows, like 76 for the Croft Super Show. So this is like, this is a whole like, yeah, it's half in, decade. Exactly. Like, it's, it's interesting watching the evolution because you see trends come in because H.R. Puffin stuff feels very like late 60s psychedelia and 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 lidsville it feels a little more 70 like the bugaloos it's still got like the residue of the 60s even though it's the 70s but like this you know like you couldn't do the bugaloos when you do the lost saucer like lost saucer it starts getting kind of uh disco-ish you know yeah or even yeah it's like um Bay City Rollers. <laughs> you, you follow Sid and Marty Croft, you watch the 60s turn into the 80s. Because one show we didn't get to and one show that's not on Tubi is Pink Lady and Jeff. Which was kind of like, it was the end, it like was the end of an era because it was Sid and Marty Croft's like 1980 show. And it was one of those uh, variety shows like Donnie and Marie, like the Brady Bunch variety show or whatever. It was a variety show and it just like, it bombed hard because it was uh, it was pink lady they were like you know the this this you know hugely successful pop duo in japan so then the crofts were like okay we're gonna make a show around them didn't realize they didn't speak any english <laughs> so they're doing these like comedy <laughs> skits and routines but they have to like learn their uh dialogue phonetically and stuff so then they they find jeff to be like the comedian so he's like carrying you know like he's doing all the talking one reason you might want to check out pink lady and jeff like i, I, I was enjoy i was enjoying I'm, I'm it quite so a bit like it's one of those shows like when people talk about oh the worst show ever made pink lady and jeff is one of them and i feel like calling it pink lady and jeff is charitable because when i was watching it it just said pink lady <laughs> like <laughs> jeff is there. like i feel like people are remembering it as pink lady and jeff because jeff is front and center in the show but he wasn't in the title it's just pink lady it's a spin-off of uh is the, are the pink ladies from uh, Greece? <laughs> well, I think that was the idea. Like, I think that the name Pink Lady, it was like late 70s, and I think they were going for like the Greece kind of thing. But the reason why you might enjoy it is uh, it's, it's you know, it's a variety show. They have their players. They have their sort of, uh, you know, different uh, actors. Jim Varney. A young what? Jim Varney. Are you serious? Is one of the players. It's in a bunch of episodes. Holy he shit. has... This beautiful pyramid oh my of, God. of late seventies hair. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? But if you want to see young, uh, hip, cool Dude, Jim, Jim Varney, Varney, watch Pink Lady and Jeff. It? It's so funny seeing Jim Varney as like the young, cool. Dude. There's this picture of Jim Varney that's. Real. Oh, I know the one you're talking you know, about. You know, where, where it's like this DeLorean? glamour shot. Yeah, you, you it's know? like a glamour shot. But like this is, you know, he was a working <laughs> actor and a comedic actor or whatever. But he was still, it's like a young, cool guy in. Uh, <laughs> In about six or seven years, that's going to be earnest. earnest. So yeah, you should watch it just for that reason. Like if you grew up with these shows, it's like, you know, you don't need to explain it. It just like hits you. But if if you have, you got to just check them out. Let them wash over <laughs> you. They're like They will transform you. They will change your life, change, change the shape of your brain. Six,